hi. Um, yeah. <laughs> Things are going, you know, I guess they're going really well. I have a, I have a hard time allowing myself to be happy when things are going really well because I'm always kind of in an in emergency mode so I'm always kind of working you know to to keep things from falling apart even when things are not falling apart and I are not going to fall apart so um, you know with the business um, poorly paid studios first of all I always feel like I'm not it's like it's not real. Like I don't really have a business. It's weird because I do. I have an Oregon-based business. I, you know, I, I own it with my partner. We do stop motion. We get paid to do stop motion. Um, we do unique and interesting things that add to the field. I, you know, it's just all, it, it's, it's all there. All of it. It all says to me, you know, you have a business, you're doing this, you're doing that. But the truth of the matter is, I don't feel like I'm an adult yet. I, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel like I'm really doing it. It's like, I'm just doing my thing and it's happening. And I don't know that it's going to come of anything or what's going on. You know, it, it's called, I mean, I, I was looking it up. It's called imposter syndrome, where you feel that no matter what you do, it's not valid. Right. No matter what you do, it's not real. You're not real. You don't really. You're not really a business owner. You're not really a stop motion animator person. You don't actually make puppets, you know, for people. Um, but I do, and it's it's been kind of hard for me to kind of get my head wrapped around that. If if that makes any type of sense, um, you know, I always have these really high expectations of myself and. Like, it's like I don't allow myself to be happy because um, if I get happy or if I, if I allow myself to feel those feelings, then I'll feel accomplished and I'll quit trying, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, if I don't, if I, if I feel those feelings, if I, if I get happy and I, and I let myself feel joy and satisfaction, then I'll get lazy and complacent, which is just ridiculous because um, even when I'm super depressed, even when I'm totally unable to practically get out of bed, I'm still like, when I do get out of bed, I still work. I still do things. I, you know, I'm kind of a workaholic, right? I'm not kind of, I am a workaholic. Um, so the idea of, you know, <laughs> being complacent because I'm happy is so ridiculous. <coughs> anyway, so that's the thought I was having. Um, What's going on in the business right now? Um, wow, we, uh, we're doing a kind of a Monty Python style stop motion. Um, you know, Los Angeles is kind of funny because everywhere you go, everything's hush hush and you have to, you know, you got to sign your NDAs and you know, you can't talk about stuff a lot, but I mean, I don't think that this will be a problem. I just, um, we're not gonna have any footage on the internet, of course, but, um, it's really, uh, <laughs> It's really interesting, you know, the, the culture here versus you know, doing work in Portland. Portland, everyone's like, oh, cool, do your thing, whatever, you know. Um, here, everyone's like, ooh, shush, hush, hush, you can't get the footage. I can't even, we can't even get the footage of the entire thing. It's funny, we can't even get the footage of the entire movie because it's so hush, hush, they won't let us have the entire movie. We have our scene that we're working on. We have a snippet of the intro, um, and we have, we've seen the whole thing, but we can't have the whole thing. So it's it's a silly it's a very funny thing you know I, I think it's funny I mean of course I'll do it and I do what I'm told and we're doing everything you know by the book or whatever but uh, it's very it's very funny it's a very funny thing um, yeah so we're doing this animation in a Monty Python style and so this is the first time I've ever made complex paper puppets I mean I made paper puppets or paper backgrounds for um, uh, Jimmy's world when we did the game uh, uh, you know the uh, of gods and golems game and um, that was a lot of fun and had a really interesting kind of style and I only did that I only took two weeks to do that um, so I was like oh we got we got two weeks to cut this out film it and put it together and so we did 
but um, this is taking longer. I'm taking more time, more details. Um, I did a deer. It's pretty cute. I'll show it to you. I've got it set up. Um, I also made a down shooter while I was at it. Um, for those of you that don't know what a down shooter is, it's where uh, I might geek out for a minute here. Um, so usually when you're doing stop motion, you have your camera and it's very still and you take a picture and you move your puppet, you take a picture, right? And so then you string all the pictures together and you get a movie. All right, well, down shooting is when the camera is hung, is suspended from the ceiling, so to speak, uh, or a canopy of some sort. Uh, we've got a little pipe catwalk that I made. Um, so it's suspended, right? And so that way the camera is in place and then you put all your puppets down on a sheet, a flat sheet, and then you move them um, on a two-dimensional plane. And so I think that's, I mean, we've been dying to do that forever. Um, you know, I always thought that would be kind of fun. And so I've had this idea kind of for a down shooter, if I was ever gonna make a big down shooter, because I've seen the small down shooters and they, you know, they're like, they're like so big and they have a little tiny camera on top. Um, they're not real far from, uh, from, from the 2D plane. Um, the down shooter I made is really big. I mean, I, our, our studio here in Los Angeles is, is pretty limited. Our studio space in Los Angeles is pretty limited. Um, it's pretty small. Things are really expensive here. Our studio space in Oregon, however, is, you know, what I consider to be pretty awesome, pretty big. Um, so our studio space here is limited. So making a really big uh, down shooter to go in our limited space, you know, it was a little bit of a jump. Uh, but I did it, and it looks pretty good, and it's working really well. Originally, I was going to use plexi, but um, apparently plexiglass is a big fat no-no. So we have two sheets of glass suspended um, that we can with hinges that we can. In fact, I'll show it to you here. Um, it's it's pretty cool. This is our down shooter. Um, you look up here. This is the ceiling. I've got a light on, sorry, so that you can see. Um, this is the ceiling. The camera's up here um, under this canopy. Um, this is just a PVC pipe that I made it out of. And then I've got it attached, right, to this great big black box, right? Um, the big black box. Let's see if this will really crack a little bit. Right, so you can see you've got this big thing. You go down. This is where we put the background pieces. Down here, even further, is another level. You can see where the carpet is. Um, that's where we would put any type of uh, uh, weights, like sandbags. So you put in one level of stuff here, and then the other level of stuff goes like right here. And so you can see it's actually, um, you can lift it. It's hinged. It's kind of cool. So there's two sheets of glass. They're suspended across some two by fours. Um, and so here's the pu the deer I made, the puppet. Um, it's kind of it's kind of funny. It you know it comes in pieces, and you just use tape. It's so odd to uh, to stick everything together and animate it. So here's her head looking the other direction with her ears up. And so here she is, just like you can do whatever. It, it's just such a funny thing to me. And so then we have suspended lights, of course. You can see there's a light right there. And there's, of course, the bright light right there. And then we have another light down here underneath that's suspended right there so that it'll light up the background. And so you've got them coming in at a 45 here and here, and then you've got this one, and then you've got the camera at the top. So, yeah, I'm... You know, it, it didn't really take that much... Here, I'll move you back. It really didn't take that much to make it. Honestly, it's not that... Um, it wasn't that big of a project. I mean, it seems kind of big, but you know, basically, I made it from scraps. I made it from our uh, of Gods and Golem, our last our last installation of Gods and Golems, the big one. Um, I just took all the stage pieces, cut them up, and made this. Basically, um, we bought a couple panes of glass, and there you go. <laughs> as long as no one leans on the panes of glass, I think we're good, right? Um, so I did that. I've made a bunch of puppets. Um, I think we're gonna start filming tonight which is Greg's forte. I mean, I've made all the sets, I've made all the paper pieces, um, the puppets, it's just, um, it's actually been a lot of fun. It's a lot simpler in a lot of ways. Of course, you need this big specialty equipment, right? You need a down shooter for it, but in a lot of ways it's been like, it's a lot easier because you design the puppets, you make the puppets, it's got a limited capability, everyone knows it. 
and so you work with it. And if you look at Monty Python, like the stuff that they did, they don't, their puppets don't even hardly move. Sometimes they're just one piece, and they just move it back and forth. So it's like it's it's a lot easier in a lot of ways, especially if we're trying to do like emulate their style. Um, so uh, it, we'll see how it goes. I, I'm excited. I mean, always every time we start um, filming a new project, I, I get excited, and um, you know, you, you, like I've said before, there's a learning curve. So you get to know the sets, you get to know the puppets, you get to know how the equipment works each and every time, right? And so the last set we did, our stuff that's still in the can for Destroyer, right? There was a learning curve with the puppets. You had to get to know Dr. Hand, which is our big, you know, scary, <laughs> scary puppet or whatever. And uh, you get to know the sets and the way we're setting up. And so, like I said, there's this learning curve and it's... um. You know, it, it takes, it's like, I don't know, it's like getting to know a friend, someone that, you know, a work friend, a close work friend, and you're working closely with them, and the more you get to know them, you get to know how they work and what they can do and how you can work together. And so that's kind of what's going to be happening um, here shortly. So, um, yeah, I guess wish us luck. <laughs>